Okay, let's learn to play Beethoven Sonatina in G major, uh, first movement. Um, the word sonatina means that it's a mini sonata, and sonata form has three parts. So the first part is exposition, and second part is development, and third part is recapitulation. It's my, much like an essay form where you have intro, body, and conclusion. So the intro is basically saying, this is what I'm going to say, and that's exposition. The body is, I'm saying it now, and that's development, and usually most interesting, like harmonically interesting activities or um, things like that, a lot of sequences take place in the development. And the recapitulation is like the conclusion in an essay, where that's what I said. So that will make, it will make sense that exposition and recapitulation, much like introduction and conclusion, have a lot of elements in common. So this sonatina, um, because it is a mini sonata, has very, very short sections, but they, it still does have all three parts of a sonata form. So let's do a little bit of score study. So if you can kind of grab a pencil and write things down, um, it's in the key of G major, as I mentioned in the beginning. So we have F sharp throughout, okay? And the beginning, this part is um, exposition. Oh, I think my pen's not working very well. Um, going on to pencil, so, or my finger. So this is exposition. And the exposition consists of sentence. So if um, refer back to the video that we've watched this week, then the sentence form is, here's a basic idea. Two, major, two measures long, a basic idea. Now, basic idea repeated. to this, right? But it's the same rhythm. The basic idea prime, and then we have uh, four measures of continuation. Okay, so, and that actually concludes expedition. So expedition is a sentence form. 2 plus 2 and 4, okay? That's why uh, a lot of classical music sounds so well balanced because it was conceived in a balanced manner. Okay, second part of the sonata form, in this case sonatina, is development. Okay, write that down. Okay, and the development is full of sequences. You listen to it. a return to um, recapitulation. Oh, sorry, my writing's crude because I'm using my fingertips. So recapitulation, let's see if it's almost identical to the exposition. there but he decided to add something and it is a coda coda is a special ending so it's kind of a um, composers add that in at the end where it's like okay maybe i'm not ready to end finish 
quite yet. So we have a coda with Alberti bass in the left hand. You know, all these accompaniment pattern became popular in classical era and it's called Alberti bass. So that's A-L-B-E-R-T-I. And then we have coda. Actually, nothing much happens. We just go back and forth between five and one. So we have like, for example, this is G, one, down to five, one, five, like a variation of five, right? And then one, five. It just keeps on going back, delaying it. Here's a final cadence. Cadence is a phrase ending. Okay, going to one, and then it stays one throughout. Okay, now let's start learning it. Okay, before we start to play it together, I just want to emphasize that tuno slurs are especially important in classical music. I mean, slurs in general is important in any music, really, because they give you, the long slurs tell you um, where phrases, it's a good uh, hint from the composer where the phrases um, start and end. And the short ones are especially important because um, if they're not phrased well, then um, you don't sound very musical. So, for example, in the very opening second measure, we have a series of um, tuno slurs, right? And then it's all the tuno slurs are it's strong and weak, and it's a principle of tension release, and it's all under actually same breath or same energy. But unfortunately, on piano you have to attack it twice, so it requires extra imagination. So that's what this is what I mean. So if we're singing it, we just go da 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 da. -da. And it's under one breath, right? And so it's easy to do. It's, eh, it's heavy and then light. It's emphasis and release. But on piano, unfortunately, it's two fingers. But you have to imagine that it is um, indeed one attack. So it's one wrist motion. So I'm going to go down, up with the wrist. It's emphasis, release. Tension, release. So And it goes, G. So it's, G. And then we're going to use fingering three, two, and then two, one, and then it goes two, three, two, so it's down, up, down, up, down, up, okay, that's the second measure. Okay, now let's try learning it. Left hand chord goes... So when you usually have you have two, three chords like that, then you should play them like um, it kind of swells. Second one's the loudest. It naturally has this shape. Okay, so it will be. to connect to five, five, five in measure three and four. So we're going to use one. We're going to connect one, two, three, the upper notes. Yeah, and then now we have already bass. And there is kind of a build up to measure seven. And then we're going to separate as in detach. So it's not a staccato, but we're going to set is also 
also to no slur in the right hand. And, we're, and also it's the end of a long phrase, right? It's end of a um, sentence. So we're going to make it quiet there. So left hand, let's do, just do left hand again. Two lines is one, two, connect, and release. Two, three, four. Alberti bass and and just for some um, I think everything else is maybe self-exploratory but for fingering five two four two for this and three two one five one two five Sorry, the writing is so big. All right, now right hand. There's a little ornament on the third beat of the first measure. Uh, we're gonna make the small grace note. It's called grace note. Softer, and then emphasize the A. So it's light, heavy kind of thing. So just the right hand. Ready, go. One, two. finger ninja move or something there is four two one with a little slash that means you do some finger substitution so you silently change to one so that you can continue to sound but prep better for the next um, so let's just do that again starting from measure five one two Some fingerings here. We have five, two, three, one, three, five, four, two, three, two. Okay, let's try right hand again. And once you get the expedition, now you have the conclusion too, right? Killing two birds with one stone. It's one, two. Moderato. So that's probably more like um, like 90 uh, to 100 uh, per quarter note, but for now we're not going to worry about it. One, two, ready, start. One, two. Okay, let's.
let's learn the development. Uh, let's look at the left hand. Left hand starts with third, fourth, and then one. So we are now at measure nine. And it goes and, and. So out of all those notes, the least important will be the D. So you don't want to be too loud. And unlike the Baroque era, where left hand and right hand were more or less equal, being an independent voice, um, in classical era, a lot of times, left hand has to take the back seat as an accompaniment. It's a supporting role. So you have to be extra quiet. So even if it says mezzo forte there, right hand is like more like mezzo forte, left hand is like piano. And together, they are mezzo forte. Okay, let's just do left hand. One, two, ready, start. This whole time, I don't really go out of position. It all stays with pinky on D around this area. Let's do left hand again. Ready, go. You just play the left hand and try to follow along. We'll do that same tempo. One, two, make sure you wait. exaggerating a little bit but it's important that at the end of every slur you are in the right hand actually physically lifting so for example here is a break here is a break you don't want to connect these things to each other because um, it will just be extra musical. And also, Beethoven told you not to do it. Um, Beethoven doesn't want you to go... That's everything connected. He wants you to lift that C and then reach for that A. And then lift. who was not careless. He wrote what he meant and meant what he wrote, what he said, and he edited a lot, put a lot of um, thought into specific things that he would want um, the performers to do. So let's just try it by hand and pay extra attention to where the slurs start and where the slurs end. So it's first A, two, Don't take time, but lift and reach. So there is, oh, is it taking a deep breath and restarting. See how the passage is. And there is a natural build up, isn't there? So and then there is a sequence, so these two measures is one, and the next two, uh, oh, or here, sorry, it starts here rather, same thing, and so second one will be, I'm going to put a plus sign because um, measures 9, 10, uh, is a start and the 11 12 is the same thing but higher so we're going to play that louder and once you build that up so it's more like forte here right you sustain as in keep it the same is that volume 
and then do a slight diminuendo uh, as it goes down. So maybe just a little minus, but all within the mezzo forte. So you don't want to be going piano forward, you know, or something. And not really relenting until you get here. Okay, now let's do both hands together. Really slow. Sorry, I made the score really messy, right? One, two, ready, go. is the same thing as um, let's take a look at coda since we have is the same thing as the expedition now, for me the coda has kind of this ex expansive feel I feel like I'm looking out into um, in the beginning was maybe like being playful with the sheeps or something in the yard and you're like playing along um, and a rolling and picking flowers kind of thing and this part seems kind of like I'm looking out yeah maybe it's because continuous hour and bass I don't know and it has like the same chords right one two ready go it starts with three three two one okay um, before we go on why do composers write um, different fingering when it's the same exact thing. Why can I go two, 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 right? It's mainly because when you use different fingers, it actually creates different kind of sound. Uh, later when it speeds up, it's for the purely, you know, uh, physical purposes. But in, even in slow passages, we like to use different fingers for expressiveness, actually, ex expressivity um, or expression. <laughs> Okay, let's try, how about just the right hand? It spells out G major, so it's starting D, D, so pay attention to fingering, and then two, four, five, there's a natural roll, two, here, two, three, four, same fingering, D, Add a little 
mean, technically you can pedal before. I'm pedaling. to complicate things so if you're actually comfortable with the nose you can try this kind of pedaling and so forth but it only works if um, left hand is soft enough so the whole time left hand's got to be more like um, pianissimo and right hand's more like forte in order to balance this out okay i hope you enjoy learning this piece